pursuant to the requirements of the Open Public Meetings Act, notice of this meeting was published on Thursday, July 7th, editions of the Double Times and Star Ledger. A copy of the annual meeting notice has been posted on the Double Time of Bolton Board. Copies are on file in the municipal clerk's office. Pledge of Allegiance. I Okay, everybody, I would like to welcome you to our December 13th meeting. It is the first and uh, I think the only meeting for the month of December. Being that it's the first meeting of the month, it's also our combined conference slash regular meeting, which means that any council members or members of the administration can put anything they want on the agenda for discussion. However, that discussion is in and among uh, the council with our professionals. While the public is here to listen, uh, they can take note. And if you have something that piques your curiosity, you most certainly can discuss that during your public commenting portion of the meeting. Uh, but right now, while we have these discussions, they are only in and among ourselves. Uh, but that being said, I don't believe that we have anything on for discussion. Any council member can put anything on. We have nothing for today. Moving right along. Tommy? Good. Check that box. Uh, report to the manager. Well, as our last meeting in... 2022, I want to wish everybody a very Merry Christmas and certainly a happy, healthy new year. Um, just a few items that I want to report. First item, I certainly hope it doesn't ruin um, anyone's Christmas, but um, it's been brought to the council's attention on several times that our DPW, when we do a water job, we do not replace the existing soil and we bring in new dirt, creates course and that's wrong and again it was brought to this council's attention a few times and it actually said PSCG they don't do it that way they use the same soil so uh, we had a meeting with PSCG and on an unrelated issue but I asked them I said you know what do you do when you are breaking ground and I received this email from a one of the site supervisors and it says, Anthony, as discussed at a meeting, PSCG prefers method of restoration for our main and service project is remove and replace. We can't re remove the old spoils, ask for concrete, and replace it with dry sand, BGA, and say this, um, stay based. So the point that I'm trying to say is they, what we have been doing and what we've presented to the council with it is actually correct, and that's exactly what PSCG does. They said when they replace a gas line, sometimes they get to use the existing soil because it's not a water line, it's not a water break, and that soil is not wet. So I did, when I did receive this in writing, I did want to share with the council because it, it has been brought up to uh, your attention on several times. The uh, next item, the Mr. Manager, the DEP has also clarified that to us as well. That is correct. There's, I just wanted to just bring that point home. Um, last week. We went out uh, for auction. Uh, Willie and company did a great job. We, we, we sold 15 pieces of equipment that ranged, um, the oldest was 1988, that's like 34 years. Um, there was a piece of equipment that we had, $400 for that piece. The, the youngest piece of equipment was a 2003. Um, we got another 600 for that. But we, we got rid of 15 pieces of Tom, so to speak. Uh, we generated a cost of $20,000, and that's just basically in line with, you know, uh, again, everything goes up, so we try to come up with initial ways of bringing in revenue, uh, which brings up to, to, to the next item. January 1st, the township is switching over payroll companies, um, going with a new company, ADS. They're very municipal friendly, so to speak. We have ADP for so many years. What I want to tell the council is that just for the first pay and the first pay only, the employees and yourselves will not get a direct deposit into your account. First pay has to be a hard check. After that first pay on, I believe it's like January, after we get that first pay, we'll distribute the checks. We're not going to put them in the mouth. Everybody's 
paycheck will get from that one. But after that first pay, where you actually get the hard copy, hard check, everything goes right back to the direct deposit where you are today. You don't have to refill out any forms. You don't have to do anything. So it's ADS. This is a company that we um, approved back in November. And the only other thing that I would add to that is that we're projecting a $50,000 savings uh, compared to what we're paying today for payroll over the course of a year. So 50000 here, 20000 here. Again, we're just trying to uh, be cost efficient, cost effective. Um, our CFO will be at the next meeting um, to discuss uh, the budget. But these are just, again, we can't prevent gasoline from going up. We can't prevent oil from going up. But certainly, if we come up and we're as creative as it can be to generate revenue, that's basically what we're trying to do here. That's some, some small examples. And that's basically my report. Speaking of uh, the budget and revenue, I saw today a bunch of municipalities are meeting with the governor's office because the health insurance has gone up 24%. It's going to crush them. So the state's sitting on a $6 billion surplus, and a bunch of these mayors that he's meeting with are advocating to get some of that back as a one-time um, revenue source, I guess. Uh, all these different municipalities are on the state benefits plan. We're not, but our insurance costs go up. I'm wondering if the state is going to do that for all municipalities or just those that are on the public plan. But if we can find out, we can maybe start advocating to our legislators. Certainly do a little research on that. We say whatever anybody else gets, we should get. Okay, anybody have any questions for the manager? Yeah, through the chair. Um, Anthony, I just have some questions relative to overtime. And, and have we looked at the possibility of hiring more firemen to offset some of that overtime? Because the last I heard, it, you know, we're talking huge numbers here. Um, so, Councilman, the last time we sat down with the fire chief to discuss personnel and actual uh, numbers in general, we were hoping, we were hoping for um, the uh, SAFER grant. This is a grant specifically allocated to hire new fire, firefighters. They pick up the cost for the first three years or so. And we were hopeful that we were going to be receiving a million dollars, two million dollars. Uh, unfortunately, within the last probably 15 days, we did get a written confirmation that uh, we did not um, get any allocation in the federal grant as a safer grant. So we were kind of on, um, we were in idle, waiting to see if that, that money was going to come by. And I know your last question or one of your emails was pertaining that obviously the amount of overtime that we're spending versus um, hiring. Um, I asked the chief to, to look into a formula to see um, what the council may or may not realize is that right now we're probably going to close 2022 spending probably 700000 in overtime. That's a lot of money. Yeah, that's um, up to a couple of people at least. So the 700000 is is something that obviously is a concern. Um, and it's not even so much, it's, it's a concern obviously because it has a major impact on the budget. Um, the other concern is that there's so much overtime is that Chief Oliveri is here tonight and told me that sometimes it's tough to get, it's actually tough to give the overtime away um, because there's so many hours. So certainly, yeah, people. I think it's a conversation that we have to have. Uh, we could, certainly should put it on the agenda um, and we can discuss it and have Chief Oliveri, I know uh, he's a numbers guy and there has to be like a, a break even point where it makes sense. Um, where we can reduce over time and at the same time, um, you know, show a savings in the budget. Thank you. That's, I think I need to do that quick. Anybody else for the manager? No? Okay. We're going to move on. Uh, next item on the agenda is the report of the mayor. I'd like to some, uh, start with some past events. We had our Bellville Energy Assistance Day on Friday, December 2nd. That was very widely received. Uh, a lot of people are there. I think we're going to be doing that again. We also recently had a blood drive. That went very well. Last past week, we had a groundbreaking for uh, 
development complex that's going to be down on Washington Avenue. It's going to anchor that side of Washington Avenue. Very happy to see an old warehouse be repurposed. Uh, the firemen, I was actually there. Firemen had a nice crowd for Santa. Santa had a busy day last Saturday. Not only was he at the firehouse, then he needed a little rest. And then he went on to our winter festival and uh, Christmas tree lighting. Uh, as you saw my social media post about that, it was a great effort. A uh, great combination uh, with the township and the school district coming together for that. Uh, there was literally something there for everybody. There was obviously the tree lighting, but we had the Clydesdales. Not one, not two, three Clydesdales. We had the trackless train. We had famous Graziano chestnuts. Uh, police department had a great display. Uh, 32 different community organizations uh, lined what we call Candy Lane Lane. Candy Lane. Candy Lane. Candy Lane. Candy Lane. Candy Cane Lane. Candy Cane. Candy Cane. That's where they all were. Uh, it was, it was uh, we are told that they estimated between two and 3,000 people in attendance. Uh, it, was, it was probably one of our best ones. Uh, last night I had the opportunity to swear in the new Italian American Club members. They had a packed house over the Senior Center. And today I was with the Tuesday Club at Nanina's for their senior Christmas party. That's past. Uh, upcoming events. Uh, tomorrow, pack a police car. I told Chief that that was a rain, uh, uh, a, a rain, uh, they, a weather. They, due they to, decided to. Because the Chief is not big on rain, no, rain days, <laughs> I've learned. No. But yet we have a rain day for a. Okay. Oh. Just want to make sure I got all my ducks in a row. So tomorrow, pack a police car. The first time we're doing that, it's going to be at ShopRite uh, between 10 and 4. All the, uh, everything collected is going to a soup kitchen. If it's food, right? A food, right. A pantry, food pantry. Food pantry, I'm sorry. Yep. Which we have two. Uh, Bevel doesn't have anything official, but we have two churches that we support for that. Uh, and then Friday, uh, Friday, uh, January 6th, uh, be our third or fourth year doing Three Kings Day. Uh, looking forward to that. Uh, it's going to be probably same place, same time, but uh, the flyer is being worked on now. Saw a draft of that today. Uh, that's going to be good. Some news. Uh, I know the manager mentioned uh, about DPW uh, and some of the road jobs. He brought up DPW, but I, I just want to bring up DPW because they, along with the school district staff, really did a great job. I see Bobby's here today. Uh, really did a great job with the Winter Festival, setting everything up. It's the small touches that now we're starting to see, which are great. The, the bays of, uh, bales of hay to sit on, the Christmas lights, the decorations, all those small little things. And uh, I get a chance in the setup to spend time with the guys and, and they seem to like doing it. I mean it's 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 really a great effort. Uh, today Argentina won any soccer fans uh, so I was on site at Alberto's today our official Argentinian headquarters. Uh, he will be open this coming Sunday at 10 a.m. as will several other bars and restaurants in the area. This is certainly the last council meeting of the year. I want to also mention hydrant flushing is going on through December 15th. Uh, letters to Santa. The deadline is December 15th. Uh, so far, uh, my, my office has been in, my people have been in contact, constant contact with Santa's people. Uh, we collaborate on different things. Uh, and what we're doing is uh, we want to make sure if there's a special need or, or a special request that comes through, Santa's elves communicate that to us. Uh, and we are in constant communication with the North Pole. There is no time difference. Uh, but we've had, some, we've had some interesting ones. Uh, We've had a couple interesting ones to say the least. We had a, uh, Santa has informed us that there's a, a family of six children in town. Uh, five girls, one boy. Five girls would like Barbie dolls. And the one boy just wants one morning of peace and quiet. <laughs> I'm not sure if Santa can deliver upon that one, uh, but we're gonna, we're gonna work. And then Chief, I, 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 gotta, I gotta report something here, Chief. Santa sent this back to me. Uh, we had a clever little one, clever little girl, attempt to bribe Santa with a dollar in her letter. So, clever little one. She, uh, she's going to princess. And, you know, I like, the way, I, I, I like the fact that, you know, she says that she's been okay the past year. She hasn't been great. She hasn't been perfect. But she's been okay. Uh, Santa is on this, even though I have in my possession, Santa is still on that. And uh, we're, we're going to have to figure out, Chief, how we uh, get the dollar back to her. But, uh, so it's been really nice that the deadline is going to be the 15th again. Uh, we're, we're looking for any special needs, uh, any special requests that come through so that we can have our Belleville elves step in and help out with that. Um, 
Anchor program is extended. Uh, I'm going to be doing a mailing town-wide about this. The anchor program has been extended to uh, January 31st, 2023. And uh, uh, that's, again, it's money that's available for us. Uh, it's a replacement program. Uh, it's depending on your income level, most people are going to qualify. Whether you're a renter or you're a homeowner, you're going to qualify. Uh, we do have information on the township website about that. I'm going to be trying to do at least a mailing to seniors to make sure they participate. Uh, and lastly, back to the chief. Uh, reports once again that, that that cowardly Grinch is on the loose again. So I'm going to expect you to put your best men and women on this case. Uh, we don't want the Grinch flying around Belleville stealing any Christmas joy. Uh, so maybe patrol division lookout order is we should be on the lookout for anybody green running up down the streets. Consider it. We're on that. All right. That's it for my report. Uh, this is the first meeting in a month, so again, it's uh, we have committee reports. We don't have any official standing committees here. Uh, any council member that wants to jump into a specific topic or subject can do so. Uh, so therefore, I usually start with Deputy Mayor, see if he has anything to report. Nothing. Nothing. Councilman? Councilwoman? Yes. Councilman? Yes. Thank you, Mayor. Um, as you said, we have our little ad hoc committees here, so I guess I'm on the Adult Recreation League committee since I asked a question about it at the last meeting. You did, two meetings ago, yeah. Yep. So uh, I do have a little update on that. I spoke with the manager a few times since then, and um, it looks like our first Adult Recreation League will be Dodgeball. Wow. So we're working on the flyer. That's coming out soon. Uh, so, so the draft of the flyer. Yeah, right? draft's good. The draft's uh, good. We have a draft. Huh? Yeah, and, uh, but we'll, uh, we'll come up with some dates maybe for the next council meeting when we could uh, start accepting uh, applications, teams, whatever we figure out. You know, sponsors for teams, something like that. Will you volunteer to be the captain of the town hall team? Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. All right. Uh, are we going to get like a pickleball team maybe? <laughs> you can do that. In the spring. That. Yeah, yeah. Um, where, where are we going to have dodgeball? Uh, okay. So we're from the friendly house. Yeah, cool. yeah. we're going to use it for something. Yeah, nice. finally. Yeah, finally. Um, and now I will forego the rest of my minutes to our yield grant. Yeah, I will yield it to our grant coordinator, uh, Gabby Benamini. She has a little update for us on some uh, some grants. Miss Benamini, can you just use this microphone here? project design. That was through the New Jersey TPA and we're getting some assistance with um, the Voorhees facility and some other uh, transportation associations. So the reason why we want to do this project and it is temporary because it's exactly what it is. It's temporary. It's just an idea to set up an intersection for pedestrian safety with bump outs, um, a colorful image and some communities are doing that um, you know, to allow for the visibility and the markings of a, an intersection that's a very busy intersection. It's got the middle school there. Um, the mural that we came up with was the cherry blossom, but it's not a pink blossom. It's a blue and a gold blossom for the school colors. Um, so if it works out, the idea behind this project is it could be done in other places. Um, the other underlying things behind the project is, is that we're applying for other grants that are bigger, bigger and supportive of these grants. Um, last week I was able to go to the luncheon where our police department received their bronze certification. So I think you guys are probably going to commend them for getting that. Um, they were also part of the Safe Routes to School. Every elementary school received a certificate because they've been very involved in that program. So out of this project comes the Safe Routes to School and soon the Safe Routes to School Transportation Grant will become available. So by doing these little projects and 
things to better our pedestrian safety, um, you then move yourself into better chances to receiving some of the funding. So we've already received the Safe Routes to Transit grant. We received the Washington Avenue branding study. We just applied for the other Transportation Alternatives grant, uh, which is a very large grant for Greylock Parkway. Keep your fingers crossed. But as you can imagine, very competitive, hundreds of applications, and realistically only 20 to 30 are chosen. So that's it with the project. You just wanted you all to know about it. Um, Easy Ride is on board with this also because it does include a member of, of every department. And since they are working with the police department, they, it's the police department, collaborative, the school district, the municipality, everybody's on board. Um, everybody's watching to see how we implement this project. Um, the Mayor Patterson received the Safe Routes to School grant last year to upgrade every intersection around every single school. So these are the kinds of things that, this is what it, the action takes us to the next level. Um, so I just wanted to make you all aware. So we just need an okay on the artwork to be ready to go and finalize it. And that comes from the township engineer and Frank Pignataro on the police department. With the, there's result. several options. Which one are we considering? So that's up for discussion. I don't know how colorful you want to be or how simple you want to be. Yes, so some, that's sort of what we're looking at. See any of that, but. It would be the whole intersection being painted. It would painted. be the whole, so the blue are the bump outs where, so if you notice, I, I've seen that we're painting the curves, right? Mm -hmm. So an idea is that you now develop your own curve cutouts by painting the whole street. And then you line it with ballards. And what that does is it creates the buffer for pedestrians and a smaller area for our vehicles. So that vehicles can't go around other vehicles to try to cross the intersection when other people are crossing. Um, we also had a day in May where we also stood there and we observed dismissal at the middle school. And there were about 15 of us that watched this happen, um, you know, that day. And we all took notes. And chaos. the, trans the chaos. Transportation yeah. Authority actually sent us their notes. Mm -hmm. And that's how they came up with the plan. So mm -hmm. you'll see that the, um, the information there, the guidance on how to do the project, was submitted. And we are the ones that are implementing the project. So it will be a collaboration between the DPW, uh, our artists, the students, um, and whomever else wants to be out that day to watch this happen. And we are um, planning to start hopefully again in March or April when the weather gets nice. And that's really it. Do you have any other questions? Any questions? I know. No, I think it's great. Yeah, and just, so that update was that we did submit that other mm -hmm. grant, so you do know that yeah. that was submitted. Yeah. And we just received the small history grant. Nice. Right. So we're trying to increase visibility and decrease, you know, people getting uh, hurt. Yes. Basically. Yeah. Steve. So basically, when the kids get out of school, it's like a sea of kids walking down the street. Cars are trying to go around them. We, uh, the police department even blocks off the, the street, right? Chief? So that cars can't even get down it. Yes. Yeah. So okay. it's, it's a little I'm dangerous situation. So this will help. I had to do it at this walk. Yeah. It's the school program. Yep. Um, it helps with the traffic a little because if more kids that walk to school, so right. less parents exactly. and less cars are going to be there. Fighting for a parking spot. Exactly. Yeah. And everyone wants that front parking so spot. I'm all in favor of the programs such as these. And um, yeah. again, anything that will encourage children to get back to walking to school and walking home because it's healthy. And Definitely. They get a lot of exercise from it. They get camaraderie with the fellow students. And it's, it's, a, it's a win win for everybody. But we need to make it safer for them to do so. Yes. Thank you, Chief. Thank you, Chief. Yeah. Uh, anybody on the phone? Councilman Burke, Councilman Ravel. Committee reports? Uh, not good. Okay. Next on the agenda is the approval of minutes. Regular meeting of March 22nd, 2022. Need a motion? Motion. Second. We have a motion made and second. Clerk, call the roll. Council Member Cosarelli? Yes. Tapania? Yes. Graciano? Yes. Notari? Yes. Robel? Yes. Sumilo Burke? Mayor Uh Yes. She may be on mute and doesn't. No, she's muted. Um, next on the agenda is communications. Letter received from, letter received from Mayor Melham to Armando B. Contoro, Essex County Office of Emergency Management, 
Coordinator, the appointing Deputy Chief Gerard Corbo as Emergency Management Coordinator for the Town of LaBelle will beginning January 1st, 2023 for a term of three years, term ending December 31st, 2025. Cool. Next item on our agenda is ordinances. Ordinances for public hearing, second and final reading. Number one, proposed hearing an ordinance to amend ordinance number 3332 entitled an ordinance adopting rules and regulations governing the employment of police officers for extra duty details within the township of Bell. Need a motion to open the public hearing? Motion. Second. Motion made. Second. Clerk, call roll. Councilor Eric Yes. Tanya? Yes. Graziano? Yes. Zatari? Yes. Robel? Yes. Schumel Burke? Mayor Melman? Yes. So we are open for public hearing on this ordinance and this ordinance only. If you have a question about this particular ordinance, please come forward, state your name and address for the record. Hearing none, seeing none, I'll entertain a motion to close, move for final adoption. Motion. Second. It. We have a motion made at second to close, move for final adoption. Clerk, call the roll. Council Member Cazarelli. Yes. Catania? Yes. Graziano? Yes. Natari? Yes. Robel? Yes. Strumlo Burke? Mayor Mellon? Yes. Ordinance number two for public hearing and ordinance to amend ordinance number 3157, creating permanent positions and adopting reclassification compensation plans. Do you have a motion to open public hearing? Motion. Second. We have a motion made and second to open public hearing. Clerk, call the roll. Council Member Cazarelli. Yes. Tanya? Yes. Graziano? Yes. Natari? Yes. Robel? Yes. Mayor Melhead? Yes. We're open for public hearing on this ordinance and this ordinance only. If you have a question about this particular ordinance, please come forward, state your name and address for the record. Mr. Frantantone. Uh, good evening. Uh, once again, when I went on the agenda online, that format where I could look at the resolutions and the ordinances, I couldn't get it again. So I wouldn't have to ask these questions, but what are we, so what are we doing with this ordinance? So this is a 50 cent increase for crossing guards, and they are not part of any union. So every couple years when we negotiate the union contracts and amend their salaries uh, for everybody else that's unionized, uh, they are not. So they came to the manager, asked for a meeting, and asked for a 50 cent increase. Um, the last increase they received was 2018. They have not had an increase in nearly five years. Right, it's 50 cents an hour. Increase. All right, thank you. Anybody else for this ordinance? This ordinance only. Nope. Nope. Hearing none, I just need a motion to close and move for final adoption. Motion. Second. We have a motion made and second to close and move for final adoption. Clerk, call the roll. Council Member Cosarelli. Yes. Tanya? Yes. Graziano? Hey, Cal Park. Notari? Yes. Robel? Yes. Strumolo Park? Mayor Melhead? Yes. Ordinance number three. Ordinance number three for public hearing and ordinance to, an ordinance to amend the revised general ordinances of the Township of Belleville, Chapter 8-6A, entitled Four-Way Stop Intersections Designated. Entertain a motion to open for public comment. Motion. Second. We have a motion made and second to open for public comment. And clerk, call the roll. Council Member Cazarelli. Yes. Depania? Yes. Graziano? Yes. Natari? Yes. Robel? Yes. Mayor Melman? Yes. So once again, we're over public commenting on this ordinance and this ordinance only. Mr. Jones. Yeah, just a simple question instead of going up there. That intersection is around the block from here in Braylock and Bremont. Just a question. Since it's pretty dark in our corner, is it possible that they would put the stop signs facing Greylock Parkway, you know, they light up at night, they blink? Because I could see it. a lot of people just fly down that block there. Is it a possibility? I'm sure it is. Chief is listening, so... I see them, I see them in other towns. You've probably seen them around. Solar there. operation. Yeah. Especially on Greylock side. Okay. Anybody else for this ordinance? Okay. All right, uh, before I address this particular ordinance, 
I just distributed a document to all the members of the council and your legal counsel ex that delineates the legal procedure under the state of New Jersey for the adoption process for ordinances. At the last council meeting, um, I was... You have a question about this particular ordinance? I'm getting to it. The last council meeting, which dealt with the redevelopment plan for Kmart property, I was constantly interrupted and told that if I didn't ask questions, I was going to be forced to sit down. I want to draw your attention to this is ordinance, this is Title 40, 41A-101 ordinances, subsection B, part two. And it says, all persons interested shall be given an opportunity to be heard concerning the ordinance. Mr. Mellon, it does not say questions only. It says explicitly, all persons interested shall be given an opportunity to be heard concerning the ordinance. As far as I'm concerned, and this may have to be decided by a court of law, you deprived me of my constitutional, my the civil last rights. Part of, the last part of that says concerning the ordinance. You're concerning not speaking on this ordinance right now, sir. This is the general process so you're, you're, for any ordinance. You're, you're violating ordinance. your own law this, right now. No, I, this is, Do you have a question about this particular ordinance? I'm going to comment on this ordinance in a moment. This is the general procedure for any ordinance. You can't talk for ordinance. 10 minutes and then comment on the ordinance. You have to comment on the ordinance. This has to be discussed at this point because you're in violation of the law. You can discuss it during public comment. Do you have a question about this particular ordinance? I am going to, I, I have a comment to make about this particular but ordinance. But you have to say it now. Now is the time for that. I am in support of this ordinance, but I just, Thank you. M Mario and I happen to be on the same wavelength here. I was going to s express the same concern that because Greylock Parkway is not very well illuminated, that that stop sign should have the perimeter LED flashing Chief lights. Chief Heard it. He's here. He's on it. I'm, I'm, I am reiterating what Mario said, that in order for as a public safety concern, it should be all four directions, all four stop signs, but especially the ones on Greylock, especially when this stop sign gets erected, it's going to come as a surprise to many of the motorists traversing Greylock Parkway. And I don't want, you know, those, especially for the people in the immediate area, cars slamming on brakes, possibly losing control of their vehicles, God knows what may happen. So as a public safety concern, I think the township should invest a few extra dollars. I've already gone online. These signs that are solar powered with perimeter lights are typically anywhere between $1,000 and $2,000. Not a lot of money in the grand scheme of things. So, But you only want that on your intersection. You don't want that town That's on my intersection. Where, where you live, I know. That's where you live. I'm in the fourth ward, but that particular intersection, Braymont and Greylock, is probably at least a quarter mile away from me. But just as for the whole sake of the community, there should be a, a, a lighted series of stop signs there so that everyone is given due pause to see that, that signage before they get to that intersection. Okay. So please, if you can, Chief here as well, if you can make that happen, I think it would be greatly appreciated. We don't make it happen, the Chief can, so we'll see. Thank you. Anybody else for this order? For this order, it's only. Hearing none, seeing none, will I entertain a motion to close and move for final adoption? Motion. Second it. The motion made and second. Clerk, call the roll. Council Member Cosarelli? Yes. Depenia? Yes. Graziano? Yes. Notori? Yes. Robel? Yes. Mayor Melton? Yes. Board on the table. No motion. I'll entertain a motion to move to open public comment in that. Motion. Exactly. We have a motion made and second. Clerk, call the roll. Council Member Cosarelli? Yes. Depenia? Yes. Graziano? Yes. Notori? Yes. Obel? Yes. Mayor Melman? Yes. We're now open for public commenting. I'll ask anybody in the audience that wants to speak to please raise your hand, wait until you're called upon, ask you to please come forward, state your name and address to the record, and you have five minutes to hopefully speak on what we think is township-related business. We would really appreciate that. Ma'am, you're first. <laughs> name and address, please. I'm sorry. Mabel Christ, 143 Academy Street. So like I said, okay, 143 Academy Street, I just want to read this. Um, I mean, okay, so my name is Mabel Chris. I reside at 143 Academy Street, one of the four houses on Academy Street owned by the Coptic Church that on 12-7-21, Mayor Melham and his illegally appointed planning board membership Voted to tear down. It is located between Hornblower and Washington Avenue, within the township of Belleville, New Jersey, where my children are enrolled in the public school system. 
I stand before you tonight to inform you that as a result of, of the questionable passing of application PB2116, the Coptic Church is evicting me, me and my children from an apartment that I have faithfully renting for the past 14 years. Therefore, before anyone on this council possess for any photos taken at the groundbreaking ceremony on the site where my home is now standing, I am asking that you, Mayor Meham, investigate the legitimacy of the illegally appointed planning board right to grant the right to the Coptic Church to tear down my house in attempt to save my family from being forced out of the home and onto the street into the frigid December air. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry. Anybody else? Charles Lane, Five Bell Street. <clears throat> On the uh, resolution 14 to 24, I assume that's what you do annually. Uh, hire all different attorneys for different, in case you need them for different. Every year you ask Mario, and the yeah. answer is still the same. Okay, yes, I'm still going to ask anyway. You just did it when you sat here. Just by the way. one thing. Where was it advertised? That was advertised because I missed that one. But anyway, yeah. I believe you. But anyway, by just checking. Uh, the other thing, um, and I think you're. If anybody took any. Uh, Donations from any of your firms, they would, they would be, uh, you would know, you know, you, you do check that, make sure they didn't donate to any council people. I think you have one year or so. Do I check it? No. Not what Does I anybody do. check it or do they check it on their rent before they, before they uh, submit a bid? Yeah, it's part of the bid documents. Okay, no problem. What I, uh, the other thing I noticed that in the newspaper you have the uh, uh, end of the year tax sales. And what was very disturbing is I counted, if I count right, 98 LLCs are behind under taxes. So my, the reason I'm bringing this up is if you got 98 LLCs, I know some of, some of them they're doing redevelopment. My question is, if they are delinquent in their taxes, are they still going to get a tax abatement? So in other words, I'm, I have an LLC, but I, but I got a five-year abatement. Is it still in effect and I'm behind on my taxes? Or, and how do we how do we make sure that they're not getting the I abatement? Think, I think that's a yes or no answer. I think it's well, not possible. If they're applying for the abatement, they, they can't get the abatement if they're taxes. What if they get it first and then, uh, if, and they then get, like, if they get it work, if they get it first, then they have the abatement and their taxes are different and they just fall into place with everyone else. They don't lose the abatement if they don't pay, once they get it, they don't pay their taxes. They just their taxes are just different, and they still get uh, they still get the abatement, but they, their taxes go into sale just like anybody else who doesn't who don't no, pay I, their taxes. No, I know what you're saying, but I think that stinks because you get the abatement now. Oh, well, you know what? I could be uh, lax a daisy on my. Uh, that's not within it. Unfortunately, that's not within our control. The law states what happens. So, no, I know what you're saying, but I'm just saying, but it stinks, though. Yeah, yeah, I, I would agree with you that if, if you don't, <laughs> I, I would agree with you if you don't pay your tax, if you're getting an abatement and don't pay your taxes, you should lose the abatement. Right, exactly. That's, that's the that's point I'm bringing up. There's nothing we could do about that's that. Are you state law? No. All right. No, unfortunately, no, I, but I absolutely agree with you. <laughs> Although they're not paying taxes. It's not a tax. Well, no, they are. <laughs> No, no, no. Taxes. He's, talk, he's talking about the five year. He's he right. The five, five year. That's right. So, so they would have twenty percent, zero, twenty yeah. percent. Because uh, I think you just recently revoked somebody. We did uh, yeah. abatement not too long ago. That's the reason I was bringing this up. Yeah. So they and they asked for that revocation to be revoked, and the mayor and council voted not to, um, because he had not paid his taxes beforehand, right. um, and actually wasn't paying taxes on another property that he owns. Right. So it yeah, was no, not the he did not he does not have that abatement. I, I always say again for the that stinks though that may fall behind. But anyway, there's ninety eight of them if I count it correctly. And I was listening to what Steve Robell said before. And if I understood it correctly, uh, if you're paying that much overtime, wouldn't it have been better to hire somebody and uh, are we operating on one or two ambulances right now? We operate on one ambulance, we have two. But why not two? Um, that's, good, a no manpower? that's a great question. No, we have manpower. We have manpower for the house. The house has X amount of people. 
I actually was going to have this discussion in public uh, when we figured out if we were going to get that grant. So to, add, to answer your question, you, if, if we just went and hired four more or five more firemen, you would probably say, did you check any grants first? So now I'm saying to you that we checked grants. Now, fortunately, we thought we were going to get the answer in July or August. We just got the answer that we did not get the grant. So the first question was, can we get a grant? That grant would have been multi-millions of dollars, would have covered salaries for X amount of firemen for so many different years. We just found out literally within the last week that we did not get that grant. Now, I'm assuming as we come to the budget, people like myself, Deputy Mayor, Vinny, would sit there and look at the budget and see the overtime number and, and ask the manager and the chief to come up with a, with a better plan than paying all that overtime. Yeah, no, no, because I think I brought this up once before. I think the number is, is historically, it's always been about 70 firemen. And if, if, if I understood it correctly, you're down to like 60 or something like that. But shouldn't we be, be running two ambulances instead of one for public safety reasons? I, I brought that up. I believe we should. I think we should. I should. All right. Anybody else for public comment? Uh, good evening. First, I'd like to, this young lady who spoke uh, on Academy Street being evicted. Um, years ago, I brought up the planning board that the Coptic Church, all them homes that they're renting, uh, they're not paying taxes. All these years, they haven't paid taxes on it. The planning board wouldn't hear me because I couldn't at the time prove that they're renting them. But tonight we got proof that they were this young lady alone, 14 years. They've been making plenty of money and not paying a penny taxes. And those uses renting to a nice family like her and all the others they rent, there's three or five houses, I believe, they're making a nice profit. So we can recoup some tax money from them because that was not church services that they were using the homes for. I hope you would look into that. Uh, also, Mr. Iacona read a letter from Public Service because uh, some people were complaining about the filling of pile. That was me. Uh, what I didn't hear him say in the Public Service letter, if I heard correctly, they fill it, they remove and they fill it with fresh dirt and light sand. I did not hear the word gravel. Am I mistaken? Yes, so they, what they specifically said is they replace it with DGA and a uh, stab base, which I don't know what that is, and I can certainly get back to you on the uh, DGA. The other thing, if you observe them, which I fill potholes or anything I've done in 50 years of construction, public service compacts every foot. They put a foot of what they're in, they compact it. Another foot, and they compact it. Now. When I open my laundry, I don't want to go near the middle school. I go down Home Street, over Hornblower, and down Academy. Go down Hornblower, uh, I mean, um, yeah, Home Street, and turn over there. Every excavation they fill settles. So all you do is go down, ba boom, ba boom, ba boom, ba boom, wherever. You are. Because the gravel, and I keep telling you, I don't know if any of you understand it, the gravel has voids in it. So the vibration of cars and trucks, the surrounding soil from that excavation fills in the gravel, and every one of these, so they settle. Public service compacts it, their final filling doesn't settle. Well, the next thing is resolutions 14 to 24. Uh, Mr. Drone brought it up about that. Uh, I hope you check the pay to play because you don't know, but I just know one at least of these professionals has given you, uh, I believe, a four hundred eighty or four hundred ninety dollar contribution, and that's above the three hundred dollar limit. So your consigliere who sits right next to you, maybe he would advise you. You got to be careful to see if any of these ten, fourteen people are donating to you uh, before you give them contracts. Because you've already violated the pay to play law several times. And the other thing is, all this development is destroying our suburban character. It's destroying the township. We can't move anymore. Uh, not only Belleville, Montclair, and Bloomfield. My daughter moved to Roseland 10 years ago. 
15, 20 minutes, 8.1 miles. Now, 45 minutes to an hour if we're lucky. And Mr. Montclair, Mr. Tony, which development in particular do you associate all that traffic to? I just said mainly right now, which it's one? Montclair and Bloomfield. Belleville. Where you said traffic is tough in Belleville. Which development in Belleville is contributing to that? I'm telling you, Montclair and Bloomfield, and all this development under construction is just going to exacerbate it even more. Okay. Right now, with their development, and because I've said many times, we're a landlocked community. You can only get into Belleville through the Rutgers Bridge, or two and a half miles in Nutley, or four miles in Newark. All these people that they claim, these luxury apartments in Bloomfield and Montclair, and all these New York things, and they're right. So the New York people have no way to get home except Belleville Avenue. It is a parking lot every single night. Do you need now to look, at look at all the articles. Montclair, parking is a problem, all right? They're, most of the limited space are loading zones, customers won't park, walk away. One merchant, all the businesses are hurting. There's 13 empty stores there. I do the need to wrap up. Now, up 70 to 80 percent. He's losing tens of thousands of dollars. He can't pay his employees or his vendors. Thank you. Uh, the Bloomfield Area Design, another article. These are all about Montclair articles. The people are up in arms. Now, a citizens group, and they hired a lawyer to fight that Lackawanna project. Mr. Franatoni, thank you. You're out of time, sir. Thank well, you so much. What I'm telling you, in Belmont, you've got to stop this overdevelopment. I mean, right now, that. what's going on in ShopRite, the you know, south of Shop right, the 268 units, the 115, the other. Thank you, Mr. Franto, you're out of time. Drive there. Thank you. You cannot put all the employees from the motorcycle mall park on that sidewalk. Where are they going to park when they decide to drive? Well, you got poor planning and you're hurting, you're killing the town, and we're going to suffer huge taxes when they think they're in there. Anybody else in public comment? Mr. Show. <laughs> my five minutes now. Uh, I hope you all take a, chance, a moment to read the document I gave you which explains the correct legal procedure for the public to engage in the uh, approval process for ordinances. It explicitly says again that all persons interested shall be given an opportunity to be heard concerning the ordinance. It does not say you can only ask questions about the ordinance or express your approval or lack thereof. This is going to be upheld in all future meetings. And if you if you try to deny me or anyone else their civil rights under state law, there will be consequences. In regard to the Coptic Church case, not only was the Coptic Church collecting rent on multiple, at least three buildings tax-free, they were tax-exempt, but I know for a fact that during my tenure on the Board of Ed, every year those properties were sending multiple students to our public school system. So they weren't paying any taxes whatsoever, but yet they were deriving benefits from our school system. It's outrageous. Uh, I had asked uh, about over two weeks ago about the fact that the adopted budget and the user-friendly budget for 2022 is missing from the township website. Under state law, those documents have to be publicly provided. All other communities around us, Nutley, Bloomfield, Verona, Montclair, they not only made their, those documents available, but did so in May and June of this year. You have not made the, the, the adopted budget and the user-friendly budget available. Tomorrow, unless I get assurance that those documents are going to be made public post-haste, tomorrow I'm contacting the DCA and the, uh, uh, all the other respective offices in the state to alert them about your noncompliance. Uh, as Mr. Franton Tony pointed out, and Mario too, you're, uh, you have multiple resolutions tonight to uh, uh, essentially retain legal counsel. Mr. Mellon, I know for a fact, because I've gone through the ELEC documents, at least three of the seven firms represented in those resolutions gave you significant campaign contributions. Under New Jersey ELEC law and ethics law, you're precluded for one year from having any role in awarding any municipal contracts to any vendor that provided you with three hundred or more dollars in the lead up to the twenty twenty two election. So I knew I know you'll ignore it. You're gonna vote robotically for these these folks 
because you're indebted to them, but you do so at your peril. Because if you do, not only will the list of attorneys and all their contributions be published tomorrow, but this will also be sent to the appropriate state authorities. Uh, lastly, I uh, want to, um, I'm hoping that for once, uh, uh, for once in your life, you do the right thing. And as far as a, a resolution of number 11 is concerned, which involves the street dedication for former Mayor Ray Kimball, that you approve this resolution. Kudos to Mr. Graziano for introducing it. It's long overdue. This should have been done in 2019 when, when Mayor Kimball passed away, unfortunately, at, at that time. But at least it's happening now. And I hope it's a unanimous vote. I hope all of you, all seven of you, endorse this resolution. But my, my bet is, is that you'll either abstain or you will just outright say no. But we'll know in a few moments. Thank you. You'll probably be rolling in. Anybody we'll else in public comment? Mr. Mellon. Nope. All in favor? Yep. Everybody else here? Good evening. From Ella Fleischman, 33 Main Street. No complaints tonight. I know. Shocking. Motion is closed to me. I know. <laughs> Seriously. I just want to thank the police chief and the fire chief and the police department, the fire department, and the mayor and council. I know we've battled through the year, you know. Hopefully nothing personal, and again, I don't hold anything personal, hopefully nobody holds anything personal. I just want to wish everybody a Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, Happy New Year, and hopefully we can all get together next year and actually do much more good for Belleville. And unfortunately we were, able, we were not able to make the um, tree lighting the other night. We had another engagement, but I saw the pictures again. You know I don't fight you when you do something for the town, and you know just keep up the good work. As much wish everybody a happy holidays. That's all. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Well, today motion to close. Motion. Back in second. Motion made and second. Clerk, call the roll. Council Member Cosarelli. Yes. Nathaniel. Yes. Graziano. Yes. I'm sorry. Yes. Robel. Yes. Mayor Miller. Yes. Uh, let's take a moment for the consent of everybody. We're gonna pull eleven. Eleven. I got eleven. I'm good with everything else. Just 11? Anybody else? Yes. We have a motion for the uh, consent agenda. Second. We have a motion made and second to move the consent agenda. Clerk, call the roll. Councilmember Casarelli. Yes. Pena? Yes. Graziano? Yes. Notari? Yes. Provel? Yes. Mayor Melman? Yes. Resolution number 11, uh, Councilmember Bell. Yeah, I, I just wanted to roll call and, and just to recognize and thank Tom for uh, recognizing Ray too. He's a great guy. So just a roll call. Sounds good. Second. We have a motion made and second to clerk, uh, call the roll. Clerk, call the roll. Councilmember Cosarelli? Yes. Kenya? Yes. Graziano? Yes. Notari? Yes. Robel? Yes. Mayor Melman? Yes. New business. Uh, one thing for new business mayor, I forgot during my uh, little committee report, but not that it's part of that, but I saw Mike Crone walk in. Uh, he's doing his annual wreaths across America on December 17th, which is Saturday at 12 noon at St. Peter's, right Mike? That's correct? Okay. Sounds good. Uh, let's see. Still think we are not done. So that basically concludes the, this portion of the public portion of our meeting. Um, in a minute, I'm going to entertain a motion to go to executive session. Once that motion is made and seconded and voted on, the council will be in executive session, which means we have to clear uh, this room. Uh, while we're in executive session, no action will be taken. And the only thing we're going to do after executive session is a motion to exit executive session, and then we're going to make a motion to adjourn. No action will be taken while we're in executive session, nor will any additional action be taken when we leave executive session other than to adjourn the meeting. You want to stick around out in the hallway, you are most certainly welcome to do so. But uh, in the meantime, I'm now going to entertain that motion to go to executive session. Yeah, why don't we everybody Merry Christmas before we do that. Okay. Motion. Motion. Second. Second. Motion made. Say all in favor. Aye. Aye. We are in executive session, everyone.